Hello, Fostam. Um, next up, we have Daniel Stanberg, the author of Curl, and telling us what's cool when it's running on billions of devices. Hey, you can hear me, right? Uh, <clears throat> uh, let's go. Hi, Fostam. I, I just wanted to get you sort of into the spirit here uh, um, by showing you a little uh, snippet from my inbox. I got uh, an email. It's actually a year ago now. It started out like this, nice and, and friendly, right? Uh, she, it was a woman. She had emailed me a couple of months ago. She had a little problem. She, you know, she had her account hacked on Instagram. She told me and wanted my help. I had no idea why she would contact me about that, right? <laughs> Talk to Instagram. I have no idea what you're talking about. Why are you emailing me anyway? Well, you know, I found your email address here. So you must be sort of associated somehow, right? So please talk to your friends at Instagram and sort it out for me. Mm -hmm. So uh, I tried to sort of explain to her that, no, 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 I, they use code I wrote. So I, had, I didn't even know that until you told me. So, but she didn't really understand, or she didn't really believe me, I think. But I, in the end, I think I convinced her that, no, 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 Instagram did their thing. I did mine, it just happened to end up there. So everything turned quiet for a while, and then she emailed me again. And she said, yeah, well, I wasn't aware that, that my hacking code was used by Instagram. So, well, so she, she brought me then some new evidence to sort of share with me that she had found my name also in the Spotify <laughs> terms and condition. Exhibit B, right? Ding. Look, my name is in Spotify too. Instagram and Spotify, both on her phone. That's sort of, that can't be a coincidence. I had been lying to her the entire time. I was involved from the beginning. Please fix this. And you know, these are big companies. You don't want to mess with these guys. You don't want to show that you're part of an Instagram and Spotify hacking ring. So please, uh, and she coined the phrase, Please unhack the hack. And I sort of, that, that uh, rhymes with me. So I'm trying to unhack hacks all the time. No, uh, th that's sort of some interesting stories from my inbox. So um, uh, I'd like to share some other stories from the hacking ring, or perhaps uh, uh, more accurately, an open source project that I've been fiddling with for a while. Uh, it's called Curl. And we have a colon slash slash in the logo. Um, Curl is an old project, but just to make sure that uh, we're all on the same page here, it's an open source project. We make a command line tool, and we make a library, and we transfer data specified as URLs usually. usually and it supports protocols, basically, you know, HTTP, FTP, blah, blah, blah. So, of course, um, we started a long time ago. And a long time ago, of course, we had sort of a lot of building blocks, but we didn't have a curl. So uh, like any other project, we start at some point. And in, in my case, I at one point wanted to have a little tool to download currency rates from the web. I was writing an IRC bot. And in an IRC channel, you, of course, want to have some real-time currency exchange commands. So I needed to just download currency rates like daily or so, right? HTTP sites have currency rates. I just needed to download them. So I found a little tool. Uh, in the same year this movie premiered, <coughs> 1996. So um, I started to actually sort of make it download HTTP. A couple of hundred lines of code, HTTP 1.0. It's really, really, well, it's probably not a simple protocol, but if you're doing it uh, a bit carelessly and just fast, it's really simple. So uh, then, then, then sort of, yeah, that started to work. And then suddenly we found out that, wow, they have currency on Gopher sites too. I had Gopher support. And currency si uh, rates on FTP sites. So yeah, we added FTP support too. And the, the previous to th that moment, it had been called HTTP GET, and it was called URL GET. And then one day we uh, added 
FTP upload support and suddenly the naming was wrong again and we released curl 1998. Woo, it supports HTTP, go for an FTP, an FTP upload. Yeah, 1998, March 20. So, and then, yeah, you know, we're an open source project. We have a bunch of friends. We add stuff we like and we fix some bugs and other people come around and we keep on working on it. And the number of lines of code sort of grew over the years. Um, I think it's rather suspicious that we can actually have that. I mean, where is it going to end? Uh, <coughs> but anyway, so we've been working on this little project. It's not as small anymore. So now, in 2017, we support, I think it's about uh, 21, protocol, 21 protocols, I believe, and a lot of features and, and uh, basically uh, what you want to play with with URLs and internet protocols and transfers back and forth and blah, blah, blah. Uh, a lot of things. So when we've been working on this little project in our uh, bedrooms, and spare time hacks. Uh, over time, it's not really, and you know, you're sitting there in your chambers and working on stuff, and suddenly you look around in the world and, wow, look at that. There's a lot of people using my code, right? When did that happen? So, and, and you start to hear from people that they're actually using it, and you look around and you search the web and you find out that there's a lot of companies using code. Sort of, wow, that's. And that's, these are the sort of companies that I've found, uh, proven that they're actually using curl. I'm sure that there are one or two more. And, and even if you sort of, yeah, you drown in these names, but even if you just look at some well-known brand names, uh, those are some really fun <laughs> brand names. It's sort of amazing. But, so, what would, what would all these funny companies use curl for? Curl? And when I say curl, a lot of you, a lot of whoever I talk to, they think about the little command line tool, right? Are all of these, these really using the command line tool? No. <clears throat> well, we started out a long time ago, of course, when Mac OS X started to ship curl as a default thing in Mac OS. So it ships with curl and libcurl by default, and they have a lot of tools nowadays that they build themselves that use curl and sort of yeah, that's a lot of devices using macOS. And for some reason, TVs are also very fond of using curl. So basically, any TV you have today have curl in it. Uh, and then, of course, all iPhones and iPads, uh, it's default in iOS too, so that's like, what, a billion active devices. Uh, curl is not default in Android, but I'll show you soon that all of your Android phones have curl anyway. Uh, so, and, and, and of course, it's sort of big in, in Linux, Linux service and stuff. And uh, right, and games has turned out to also be very popular too. It's portable, so you can move your games easily and it'll download things on, for all games. And it's been very popular in version control systems, like it's the, uh, used in Git and some others. <clears throat> and, and yeah, cars, big in cars. You wouldn't believe that a couple of years ago, right? Why would every single car need a transfer? Uh, internet transfer client. Uh, PSP sites, of course, it's a default transfer library sort of in PHP. PHP is what, like, a quarter of the internet. Um, a lot of set-top boxes, blah, 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 and all sorts of fun things. Um, Facebook, right? They use it uh, on the site. And, I mean, uh, as they say it, you have succeeded when you manage to sort of coin a verb. Right. Uh, and I would say that m most people would actually understand, and most in this room, I'm sure, that many of you would understand, if you'd say just curl it, you would know what it means. It's not sort of what you do with your hair. <clears throat> so all of this, and uh, I mean, it's always interesting to, to sort of, but how many are actually using this? And I, all, I get this question a lot, how many users do you have? Like, and I'd say, yeah, we have billions of users, but what is a user really? I mean, all of those uh, devices, I mean, most of you, you won't even know when you're using curl, right? It's just embedded somewhere. So I tend to say that we have a, a bunch of users, uh, many. And, and looking closer, I mean, we saw all those things, devices, uh, cars, TVs, 
printers, scanners, set-top boxes. I'd say that basically all of you are running curl uh, at least a couple of times a day. And I'd say most of the world is. And I'll show you some fun. Uh, since, I mean, it's fully open source, it's M MIT licensed, people are downloading curl, they're building it in their corner and they're running it and then they, they never tell me about it, right? I, how would I know when someone is using curl? I don't know. But Sometimes someone figures that out and sends me a link. Ooh, look, at what I found your name in my washing machine. Uh, and <laughs> look. So, and I, I started to collect a few. And th this is sort of, yeah, this is uh, the license screen in iOS. Look, in every single iOS device. Ooh, that's fun. Or what is this? Ah, that's the YouTube app on both iOS and uh, Android. What's that? Like two billion devices, right? Uh, or or uh, Skype. That's also roughly a billion installs. And what m sort of made me really popular with my kids, I could show them that I'm actually in sort of, this is ending sequence of Grand Theft Auto V. <laughs> Dad makes games, right? That was popular for a few minutes and then they ran off. Uh, but this is sort of more, uh, sort of obscure things, you know. You can find these if you really, really search for them. This ending sequence, this is my name 42 minutes in the, into the ending sequence. <laughs> I think I'm the only one who ever saw this. <laughs> well, there's a YouTube video of it, so possibly two others, but yeah. Uh, and, and, but other fun things then, we can have a, this is a billboard outside Silicon Valley. Uh, curl on billboard. And take a moment and read the command line, yes. What does it do, right? Actually, the, the ad guy who made this sign, he contacted me later and apologized. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. And this is a fun, uh, this is the NASDAQ building in New York. <laughs> and I, I don't know if you're seeing it all the way in the back, but it's a cur nice curl command line in the middle of the screen. And th that is actually a command line you, can, you could invoke that to order a t-shirt. So it's actually a genuine um, ad campaign. Uh, right, you won't really see this, but that's, this is an excerpt from a fun email with person at Facebook when they, they tried the patch in production. Seems to work fine. And the patch in production, I think, it's extra fun when it's Facebook, you know, 1.9 billion users monthly or whatever it is. <clears throat> uh, and nowadays, basically every Mercedes car has curl in it. This license agreement actually lists every car model with a little checkbox if it has curl. And why not BMW or uh, Volkswagen? <clears throat> uh, yeah, right, Sky TV, this is a TV ho uh, set top box. Um, or, and uh, Philips television. And well, the, and the, these are all funny things, but just to come back to, to the Instagram and hacking, uh, Instagram and Spotify hacking ring thing, uh, having my name in this uh, um, scenarios and surrounding makes interesting uh, other sort of, all right, sorry, I forgot about PlayStation 4. But um, I, when people then have my name, well, they can find my name in all these weird places and they run into problems. They find my name and then email me. So, yeah, uh, I'm really good at GPSs in Toyota Corollas. So, if you have any problems, just come to me. I, I just quoted it as he wrote it, or the person wrote it to me. It's, I, I see, it's a golden gem. <clears throat> So why, why would they use curl, our little thing we made a long time ago that's been going on forever? Uh, well, it turns out that the internet is sort of a wild place. You can follow the internet specifications and doing protocols. Yeah, yeah, you know, basically every protocol you're talking over the internet is documented in some specification, RFCs and everything. But it turns out that we're all interpreting, interpreting these specifications differently. And if you try to use them over the internet, you'll find out that there are a lot of uh, weird areas and corners you have to sort of fix and adapt to. And it takes time and accumulated over time. Uh, it's not that easy to just 
write a new client in, in a short time. And we've already done this, and it works. Oh, sorry, wrong way. <clears throat> and we're, of course, open source. I mean, we're here at Fostum. Of course, we're open source. So it's easy for anyone. And it's, the fact that it's MIT license makes it extremely easy for all of these funny commercial companies because they're never scared of, a, uh, of the license, really. And we have a ridiculously stable API. You can actually, the first time we made the library, uh, we released it in, the, in August 2001. And actually, those, if you rebuild those example programs from then, they still work exactly as they did then. We never broke those. We modified the API or the ABI slightly over time, but uh, only very, very little. And it's still then a powerful enough a API for all of these devices, all of these use cases to actually get, get things done, transfer data uh, as they want it. And, and nowadays, well, a C library, yeah, yeah, unsafe language, buffer overflows, blah, blah, blah. But it's still the fact that you cannot get close to the portability and availability everywhere with any other language than you can with C. And I think that has been part of the popularity that you can build this for basically any operating system and any CPU can, you can think of, at least if, it, if your CPU has 32 bits or more, and you can run curl on it. And that's, that's powerful. That means that you can write your programs, basically put it everywhere, and it'll still work the same and use libcurl the same way. And then, of course, we have, I think we have like bindings for 45 languages, so you can pick your own language. And we have a documentation. The, the good thing, I think, with maintaining the API over the years is that we can maintain, sort of just keep polishing the documentation. The documentation documents the same API. Yeah, it's decent stability, and it has a lot of protocols. It turns out that users actually use more than one protocol when they do internet transfers. So we try to ask our users, like roughly yearly, how many protocols do you actually use with curl? Because it's, sometimes it seems ridiculous to keep supporting all these weird protocols. Why would we do that? But it turns out that users are actually very keen on using many protocols in their, in their code. It's C code. It's really only there to transfer stuff. It is fairly fast. It's usually as fast as you can get. I mean, apart from the network being a, a slow bottleneck often. Um, since we're talking about all these embedded devices, most of them have gotten the curl source code. They built it for their device, and they're running with it. That also means that they're sort of, they, they enjoy having things like you know, disabling features they don't want in their car or TV, and so they can usually shave off size and, and features they don't like or don't want. And we have an, uh, how many TLS libraries can you uh, mention uh, when you get up in the morning? We support 12 TLS libraries, and <laughs> that's, that's a hard uh, challenge to just uh, mention all of them. It's also sort of a, this also goes with it. It, it makes it really attractive for all of these device manufacturers because they usually prefer one of the libraries, and they want to have a, the small one or the featureful one or the one that goes with the best license or whatever, and it makes it really handy for all of these is to pick the one you want, build curl with it, and it'll just fly. And, okay, I mean, we're at Fostum, so maybe uh, why anyone would do anything open source isn't really a surprise to you, and we're all sort of, yeah, of course it would be open source. But I still want to just fast uh, iterate over this. That I, I get this a lot. When I tell someone, you know, uh, yeah, billions of devices, cool, right? And why would I do that open source if, if, if I got just a tiny amount of money for every installation, right? I would be a millionaire or whatever. But you all know that it doesn't work like that. And it was never an alternative, and it had never been anything near what this is. I mean, I haven't done this myself. And I always enjoyed sort of the atmosphere of open source. I appreciated the day I learned about it, and I always wanted to contribute back, and it's always been like that. And it's always been a team effort. And no, I wouldn't be rich anyway. <clears throat> so that's basically sort of, sort of what it is. And I just want to explain a little bit about how this is done then. We're 
a small project. When we were never big, we're still small, but counted together, if you accumulate over the years, we have roughly 1,500 names in this sort of thank you file, which is a lot of names. Most of all helpers or contributors that have contributed something like once and never came back, and that's fine, but they're still in there. So we have about 30 to 40 contributors per release, and we do releases uh, every eight weeks, so every other month. We're a really, really small core team, possibly five. Um, so, and um, we're all volunteers. There's no particular uh, commercial backing here. There's no big company. There's no, there's really no money at all involved. And we're, of course, we're doing things like, you know, open source style. Everything is public, and we have mailing lists, and uh, right, we're on, on GitHub these days. So when I, usually when, when I try to, it goes back to a little that, uh, you know, um, no, I'm not a millionaire, I don't get money for this. Trying to explain this to an outsider, yeah, yeah, but okay, but who pays for all of this, right? There's some, have to be some organization. There's, there's a lot of code. All those devices are running code, right? Who, who, who sets this up? And what's the organization chart and everything? But we're, we're a bunch of spare time hackers. It's never changed. Um, I, well, these days I'm, act, you know, I'm employed by Mozilla and I get to uh, spend a part of my work time on curl, so that is to some extent uh, company backing, but apart from that, we're all just doing it on uh, our spare times. I'm sure that we have a lot of contributors who are actually doing, uh, I mean, they're using curl uh, at work and fix bugs or add features for their employers and send them back to us, but I don't know, and we don't keep track of that, and they're sort of, they're not really affecting the, the trajectory of the project or anything. We've had a few companies over the years who actually sort of step up and pay someone to work on a feature. I implemented SFTP and SCP support for, by a, comp uh, for a company who said, uh, we'll pay for your time. I worked on HTTP2 support a while ago, also like that, the company stepped up and said, oh, we'll pay your work time for a while if you do this. And that's fine. But really, if, if you wanna have, uh, in this sort of scenario, Companies only pay for feature development. There's nobody's going to step up and hey, we'll pay you for fixing bugs for a year. No, that doesn't happen. No, that hasn't happened yet. Um, <clears throat> right, but basically, so how do you, you write software that gets used by a billion people or more? It's, it's, there's nothing magic to this at all. It is plain old simple software engineering. You just have to write something. Uh, it should be a bit useful, you know. Review, that's good. Test it. Write some decent documentation. Documentation is, you know, we, we all know this, but it's still not as uh, common as we would like it to be, but it's really useful and uh, important. To get, it, to get something popular, it needs to be understood, and you put it understood, you need to document it. And then we release often, and then we start over again. And you just iterate like that for a long, long time, and it'll be a success in the end, hopefully. Well, that's how it worked out for us. So, and when, okay, billions of devices, you all have like three devices running my code. Do you trust it, really? Uh, or uh, will curl give us the next heart bleed? Sort of, yeah, yeah, that same, well, roughly the same code in many, 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 many places. What happens when you, someone figures out a way to trigger uh, some nastiness in a, lo a vast amount of devices? That wouldn't be too fun. So. Yeah, uh, right. I, ho I hope not. <laughs> but what do I know? I'm just wanting to mention that we're, of course, aware of the situation, sort of. 
um, it, there's some sense of responsibility, sort of, that, yeah. One, <laughs> once you have, when you have just a few users, you know, you could just do another release tomorrow or next week, it's fine, just upgrade everybody. But suddenly, when you're sort of letting this whole billions of devices really th sink in, whoa, that's a lot of, lot of devices. So, we're of course doing reviews, we review it as much as possible. I can't say that we review every single commit, but a lot of them. And we learned that having strict guidelines on code style has turned out to be really useful. So we're sort of, over time, we're being more and more strict that you should follow the code style. It doesn't matter if you like it or not. Having a, a, a common style is, helps for readability, for security, and for uh, understanding things. So that's what we're going for. And of course, documentation. So we should document everything so that you actually understand what you're doing when you're changing things and why you would change things. And, and, and perhaps you would understand APIs properly when you're using them so you don't inadvertently cause problems like that. And we test as much as possible. Testing is, of course, always hard. Um, we use Valgrind as much as possible on tests. We do, we do static code analyzing as well as much as we can, I would say. We use Coverity and we use um, Clang Analyzer a lot. Yeah, and we're part of that, uh, the Google OSS fussing project now, and we're doing some other minor fussing, and so we're starting with that. And we just recently had a code audit by the Mozilla Open Source Secure Software Effort, or whatever it's called, the MOSS. And uh, that's a great effort, by the way. They, so we got a grant and they could uh, pay a company a lot of money to spend a lot of time uh, uh, reading curl source code and they found a lot of problems and reported them back and we fixed them. And hopefully we learned something from that and we'll try to not reproduce the same problems in the future. Let's hope that works. Nah, I think it'll do. Um, right, so that's what we do in order to fix, or rather make sure that we don't get a lot of problems because, uh, right, we have right now 60 CVEs, I think, and counting. I'm sure that we will have more. We have more in the pipe. But as always, I don't think anyone should ever judge a project by the number of CVEs, not only because we have 60, but number of CVEs is never an important counter. It's what you do with the CVEs, how you handle this, that's what's important. You all know that. And I know that too, and that's sort of what we're trying to make in this project, is make sure that we take care of those the best possible way. So, I just wanted to sort of make it more about me then. No. Uh, so, Curl started, well, and Curl wasn't really the, I mean, Curl was the third name of the project, so it started in 1998 as Curl. So I've been doing this for a while. Um, it has sort of, sort of uh, marked my entire life. This is my primary hobby, this is what I do. Um, sometimes when, I, when people report problems or they say, this sucks, and then and I say, no, blah, 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 and they say, well, you shouldn't take it as personal. And then, it's, then it feels, of course it's personal. I just told you, I spent 20 years on this. 20 years, and I work on this two hours every day, roughly. Sometimes more, sometimes a little less. Two hours per day in 20 years, right? That's, uh, well, yeah, I, I guess I get to work extra much, extra uh, on curl now since Mozilla pays me for it as well. So, sort of just accumulating this. I spent a lot of time on this. So possibly that is part of the explanation why I actually sort of got somewhere by now. And it, I must say that looking at this, it feels good that at least those 14,000 hours wasn't completely wasted. Most of those emails probably were. <laughs> okay, but so then people tend to ask me, okay then, but why? Why keep up with it? Been doing this for 20 years, right? But, 
I really cannot put the finger on it in any, one, in, in any way other than, yeah, it's just so much fun. You know, delivering something and, and making sure that, yeah, it works and people appreciate it and it just runs everywhere. That's an awful, I'm oh, sorry, that's an awesome feeling and you will really, yeah, and then someone reports a bug, ah, we can't have that, and then so, so we continue and someone adds a feature, and, ah, it uh, struck me that we really need another feature, and we add that, and we add a bug, and we need to fix that, and that's just how it is, we just move on, like every other project, it never ends. And, right, everyone needs a hobby, right? Be because I, I often get the question, right, 14,000 hours, right? That's a complete waste. Because what if you had gotten just a little, little hourly rate on that time? You would earn a lot of money. But, but I try to get the focus back on this being a hobby. Most, of, most people, at least in, the sort of in, war, in our sort of Western world, ha most people have some sort of hobby. You spend time, you go golfing, you go canoeing, or you go walking in the woods. That's hobbies, right? That's also a hobby to just spend a lot of time in front of a computer and writing car. Uh, so, yeah, it's just the most fun I can imagine. Um, right. And then, when I've explained that, they look at me a, a bit weird. So, the, the, so yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you're a strange person anyway. So, but seriously, isn't it ever done, right? 20 years! And it's just a command line tool, right? And then a lot of people tell me that. Yeah, I used the curl command line tool in 2005, the first time, or something like that, and it still works the same way, right? You can use the same options you used then, they work now. What happened? Uh, did you spend 15 more years on making those same options work? <laughs> ah, not exactly, but yeah. It feels like that sometimes. <laughs> but anyway, we're of course always heading, heading forward, upwards, onwards, uh, and since we're celebrating actually 19 years as a project in, in a month, we're actually having our first curl meetup meeting in the real world in Germany in March. So if you're into curl, check it out. But other things than happening apart from us meeting in Germany, uh, there's a future for, for curl because no, it's never really never done, it's never completed, it's never finished, there are always bugs, and as you know, the internet didn't really stop at any point during these 20 years, so the internet is, keep, is keeping up, I mean, it keeps changing, it keeps evolving, and we need to keep evolving with that to, in order to sort of work the way the rest of the internet does and make sure that everyone can do what they, what they want to do on, on the current internet and the future internet. Things like new protocol versions and new ways to do things and better ways to use compressions and blah, blah, blah. I mean, we introduced HTTP2 a few years ago. We're going to introduce the next protocols as soon as possible. Um, at 4.30 in the Mozilla room, I'll tell you something about the next protocols. Um, and of course, the, it, this is open source. It'll just survive, and it'll keep iterating. It doesn't matter if I get run over by a bus tomorrow or just get bored and just go home. It'll be there. It'll still iterate. So it doesn't, it does, this doesn't sort of depend on me. <coughs> and there's truly no slowdown in sight. If you're looking at sort of commit rates or line of co lines of code or anything, it's just going and going and going. And of course, you can help. Just join in and fix the bugs. Uh, so I wanted to show you then a little peek of, of our roadmap going forward. So this is sort of where, how the magic is made in this project. There it is. <laughs> now the secret is out, right? So we have quite a lot of, I, I'm, I, I talk so fast or so little or whatever it is. So if you have any questions, there are some mics or one mic at least or uh, something.
Hi. Uh, thanks for the talk. Have you ever been approached by a, a, a government agency or any other organization to build a backdoor into curl? <laughs> Thank you for that lovely question. <laughs> uh, if I had been contacted by a foreign government to insert backdoors in my code, how would you know? That's why I'm asking. <laughs> but if they had approached me, I wouldn't tell you anyway, right? So I, my, my suggestion is that you go and review the code and tell me if you find it out. Well, no, I have not been. I have not been approached by a government or a company or anyone to do anything of any sort of bad faith. Uh, in, in, not in the code and not uh, using the code in any way, actually. We are all friendly. Most of us. Uh, hello. Uh, does anyone still use Gopher? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, but I, every year when I ask this question to curl users, what are you using in curl? I ask them, what protocols are you using in curl? And there are always people marking that gopher. Uh, and it makes me curious if they're actually marking the gopher because they're using it or because they think I should keep it. So eh, I'm not sure. But actually, last time, the gopher was not the least used protocol out of the protocols we support. So. I guess kind of following on from that, um, of all the protocols you've had to implement, which would you say yeah, you've spent the most time on or has been the most difficult? Um, and I guess second part, why is that Samba? Can, can you repeat that? Um, so of all the protocols that you've had to implement as part of the curl project, um, which would you say you've spent the most time on, which has taken the longest to implement? The longest to, I, I don't get. The longest to write support for, the, the, the longest to support. The, I think mean, none of them ever stops being supported and no, none of them really stops being developed. So I think all protocols that are the most used, they're also sort of most abused or most, most different flavors of them in the world. So like trying to support HTTP that's a never-ending game. That will never stop and will never be fully compliant with everything in the world. So, so I'm not sure that we ever stopped developing sort of the HTTP support. It's going to be forever. So if I was going to name one protocol that is the hardest to support, that is HTTP because it's a, it's a wild west to support it. Hi. Thank you for libcurl. Um, do you think HTTP2 will finally take over HTTP everywhere? Uh, I'll talk about that in a Mozilla room. But yeah, um, HTTP2 is, as, as HTTP2 is made by the browser, is only supporting HTTP2 over HTTPS that is encrypted. And if you're looking at, if you're counting traffic in checking what Firefox records today, actually, more than half of all the connections over HTTPS is using HTTP2. So it is already at least on its way towards that. I don't think it'll ever truly reach 100% because HTTP1 and even, I mean, HTTP1.1 and HTTP1.0 is going to remain in servers for a very, very long time. But there will also be new contenders after HTTP2. So maybe HTTP2 will only be here for a period of time until the next one replaces HTTP2. Okay, uh, hypothetical situation. The last license with your name in it has just been written. What year is it and why is no one using curl anymore? Sorry? Just, just I'm asking you to predict the death of curl. Why, like under what circumstances will someone, will, will curl not be used anymore? I I can't hear the question, sorry. Why, like, <laughs> why, uh, will, like, what, what would cause uh, curl to no longer be used? Like, it's on a billion devices. Why would it stop being used ever? Is it because a new tool comes along? It's be is it because you are, like, no longer supporting it? Like, there's right. this massive open source project. What causes it to die? Uh, that's a really good question, and I think it's sort of 
as I never really understood why it took off, I think I would have a hard time. <laughs> it's like, wow, well, I don't know. But I, I would imagine that if I just listen in to what people are saying, then people, I mean, the constant mantra I get in my face every time I say something about libcurl is, yeah, it's written in C, right? Buffer overflows, bad, bad, bad. So someone would, would say that, yeah, <laughs> the future of a libcurl-like would be another language that would be a safe language, and then everything would be grand and much better. You can hear from my voice that I don't really believe in that, but maybe, maybe that'll be what challenge it and replaces it eventually. Um, it's really hard to tell because I'm, the ones who are using it today, they're using it for a reason and maybe those will fail for some reason and some other uh, devices or manufacturers will suddenly pick up something else and become much bigger. I don't know. It's really hard to tell and for me it doesn't really matter. I'll just run this for as long as I think it's fun. Maybe I'll get bored of it someday, maybe I'm not, but and maybe, I, I mean, it is good with competitors, so it's fine as long as we should have many, many competitors. That will be good for the ecosystem, so fine. Make, make more competitors. That will be great. Hi, thanks for the talk. Um, all those devices with your code in, um, many, many of them are never going to be updated, and uh, so there's going to be bugs and maybe some serious ones. How do you feel about that? Uh, yeah, we have, uh, that's a, sort of a major problem, I think, in a project that we have some of these uh, producers and of devices, they have really, really, really long upgrade cycles, like decades sometimes. Someone shows up on the mailing list and asks us about, hey, I have a bug in this version. All right, we released that 14 years ago. <laughs> no, no, we don't want to update, we just want the fix. <laughs> so, yeah, but I, I don't think... I mean, I, I think that it's a pity, and I think that it's sort of, it drains our resources and everything, because I think, yeah, we fixed, like, we fix on average, I think, about 400 bugs every year. Like, yeah, 10 years, right? That's a lot of bugs that you have in your code. You should upgrade. So, I don't know. I'm, I can't really affect that. I can only suggest to them that they maybe upgrade sooner or consider this. But I also think it sort of drives in the other direction as well. I don't, uh, if you ever want to have some fun, you should follow me on Twitter and discuss URL syntax. Uh, that is sort of a, a thing that, since we have devices using the internet with very, very long update cycles, we also need things to actually be somewhat stable. URLs shouldn't change over time. The URL we have today should work in 10 years, as long as the servers and everything is there. The syntax shouldn't change. The protocol, that the things we do today, they should still work, even in the future. Hi. Talking about yeah. command line applications rather than the library, uh, what do you think of wget, and uh, do you think it does anything better than curl? <laughs> I, I like to keep, maintain the image that we're in a fair struggle. Sort of the curl wget wars of, of the thousands. But uh, wget is an excellent command line tool for getting things off the internet using a bunch of those, uh, well, at least two protocols that curl also supports. And it does a lot of other things. So I, I think the wget is a great project and a great tool. Everyone should use it. It has a small overlap in features with curl, but looking at what both projects can do, that overlap isn't particularly large. So by all means, use whatever tool you would like, the best tool for the job or the best tool you like. Hi, thank you for the talk. Um, if you had to start over like from the beginning with um, just a blank draft, would you do something better or just something marginally better than the current curl? Because you said that there is like uh, 50,000 com commits, something like that. And uh, it's, it's very huge. And uh, I can think of a so big, uh, huge code base without you know, some design flow you want to fix or something that you let in your code and you never fix it because it just worked. Which is, do you want to have like start all over again and do something better or is not just not possible? 
it is, or, I mean, as an engineer, it's always attractive to consider the case, yeah, yeah, throw out the old rubbish, just sort of clean plate and build a new nice house the way we see it now uh, that it should work. But, but I always resist that because I don't think that is a very long-term solution. Everything is going to be iterative all the time. So even if I would rewrite everything today, it would still be an iterative process in a year's time. So I don't really ever consider throwing everything out and starting over. I'm always in polishing what we have, re making sure that we re change things so that it becomes better without rewriting everything from scratch. So it's really, for me, it's more of a, uh, no, I would never start over. <laughs> That's basically not going to happen. But so, did we do decisions in the beginning and, and things that were stupid that we're suffering from today? Yes, we did. And maybe a bunch of those decisions and, and the choices, we should have done it differently and we would have been happier today. But yeah, but who doesn't? I mean, who, who, who don't do stupid decisions through life, right? We just have to live with them and sort of make up for them over time. And, it tends to work out anyway. Thanks. No more questions. 4.30 in the Mozilla room. Thank you.